Kong. The eighth wonder of the world. This gigantic ape has towered over cinema goers since 1933, terrorizing cities, killing giant reptiles and charming damsels for almost a hundred years. His most recent iteration, as seen in the MonsterVerse, is easily the most intelligent version of the character, being more human than ever before, as if Kong himself was an ancient ancestor to mankind, lost to time, a missing link between man and monster, perfectly adapted for surviving in the Hollow Earth. With almost unlimited stamina and extreme levels of strength, Kong's species are easily one of the most interesting titans in the animal kingdom. Based on research with Iwi tribesmen before they were wiped out by the storm on Skull Island, Kong's species have a hierarchy. Based on real natural orders, combined with the tribe's monarchal society. So join us as we take a look at what it would take for Kong to become king and the lengths he'd have to go to become one. I'm Alistair, and welcome to Dangerville. Kingi, Kwanda, Ra, Malik, Vwa, Karal, and Ahai all words used by cultures across the world to describe a king. Now what about the Iwis, the very civilization that worshipped the Kongs on Skull Island? Well, it gets a bit complicated. The Iwis are actually non-verbal, so they have to use different mediums to describe their king, mostly visual, such as hieroglyphs, iconographical writing systems utilized by other ancient cultures like Egyptians and Mayans. But how did their kind gain the title of king, and is Kong even a king? Well, we can assume the title of king is based on who is the dominant member of the pack. Since Kong is the last of his kind, he would naturally be appointed the role of king, since there's no one to challenge him. But in a thriving group, the Kongs would behave very differently. And since we've theorized that Kong will find other members of his species in the Hollow Earth, this information may be very important for the MonsterVerse going forward. How will the role of King affect how the group functions? The only way we can theorize how the Kongs acted in functional societies is by basing them off existing great ape packs. In equatorial Africa live the Silverback Gorilla, possibly the biggest influence for Kong as we know it. These apes are incredibly intelligent and have complex societies consisting of 12 to as many as 65 individuals, with each silverback having a unique hierarchical role. Groups consist of one dominant adult male, multiple adult females, and their young. The alpha of the pack will make decisions such as where to sleep and eat, who to trust, and how to resolve conflicts and will perform tasks such as reproducing and defending the group from enemies. How is an alpha chosen, though? Is it a birthright, or is it earned? Well, the title of alpha is appointed to the oldest and strongest member of the group, since they have the greatest responsibility to protect all members of his community. Although the role can be challenged, and by defeating the leader, a new silverback will be appointed as alpha. So, how can we relate this to the Kongs? Well, we can assume they have a very similar system, with each member having their own unique role, with females caring for the young, males hunting titans for food, and of course, the leader who makes the decisions. This means for a Kong to become king, the alpha of the pack, they would have to initiate a brutal battle with the leader for the position, which would have shook the very ground beneath their feet although this is not a common occurrence, since the Kongs can live hundreds and perhaps even thousands of years. If you've ever seen a video of gorillas fighting, imagine that but a hundred times larger. They would typically not fight to the death. Either Titan will know when they've been defeated, but they'll be left bruised and bloody with several broken bones. Since we know Kong is traveling to the Hollow Earth in the upcoming MonsterVerse film, there is a huge chance he could find other members of his species hidden away after the Godzilla and Kong war that wiped out most of their kind. And he might also find that he is relatively young compared to the already existing members of his species. He may have been king when there was no one to challenge him, but he is no king in the Hollow Earth. 
In the film, we could see him happily join the group since he previously assumed he was the last remaining Kong. Depressingly, on Skull Island, the only way for Kong to see what his species looked like was in the reflection from the water, so actually getting to know others of his kind would make a refreshing change. Although he would find he has no authority and would face an uphill battle as he would need to challenge the Alpha in order to become king. Why would he need to become king, though? Well, we have theorized that Kong's family still hate Godzilla due to what his ancestors did to their species, by wiping the majority of them out and exiling them to the surface on Skull Island, and that they might naturally try and take down the King of the Monsters. But since Kong and Godzilla have put aside their differences, after learning they are both necessary to the balance of the planet's ecosystem, he knows he can't let that happen. Kong will have to become the Alpha to make sure his family do not kill Godzilla so they can all live in harmony. Last year, we heard rumors from official sources that the title floating around the studio was Son of Kong, so there is a possibility that Kong works his way up the chain of hierarchy and could even start his own group and becomes an Alpha that way. This is exactly how maturing gorillas form their own packs, by leaving and forming their own group to avoid conflicts with the dominant silverback. We've got an idea on how their societies functioned, since in Godzilla vs Kong, we see the remnants of enormous cathedral-like structures where the species would congregate, essentially a titan parliament, and at the center was a throne where the king would sit and he would be treated like royalty for keeping the group safe. So the way Kong's social orders worked are very similar to how gorillas and even Homo sapiens functioned, acting as a sort of middle ground. Since ancestors to the Iwis worshipped the Kongs in the Hollow Earth, they likely appointed the title of King to the Alpha, and if a male fought the Alpha for dominance, the Iwis crowned the new Alpha as King. So whilst our Kong may be king to us, if he was to discover a thriving group of Kongs in the Hollow Earth, he would lose that crown and would have to earn his place. We could see Kong officially earn his title of King Kong in a brutal battle against an older and larger member of his species, but the implications on the story are massive. Kong, after earning his title, would have more responsibility than he's ever experienced before. Ruling an island is hard, but ruling a civilization of great apes in a continent-sized realm in the center of the Earth is even harder. Do you hope to see more Kongs in Godzilla vs Kong Origins with a fully functioning civilization? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like, because it helps this video reach even more fans. Don't forget to subscribe and stomp the notification button to become a resident of Dangerville today. I've been Alistair, and we'll see you residents in the next one.